Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory and I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. As my YouTube channel continues to grow, I have viewers sending me videos of their pickleball games and asking me to pick them apart. They also want to know what level I think they're at. So here's a game played at the Atlanta Pickleball Center posted on the new YouTube channel, Everyday Pickleball. They've asked me to pick it apart. They consider themselves to be 4.0 players, and they want to see if I agree. Well, USA Pickleball has a list of 22 things that a player should be able to do to be considered a 4.0 player. If you want to know what those things are, there's a link in the description below. Out of the 22 things, there are two things that I keep an eye out for. The first one is, can a player consistently execute a third shot drop into the kitchen from the baseline in order to move forward on the court? The second one is, can a player sustain a dink exchange at the net waiting patiently for a putaway shot? Now there are players who play at the four point level who are very one dimensional. They are mostly power players known as bangers and their short game or soft game is almost non-existent. Can they play at the four point level? Sure they can. But can they win against teams that have both a power game and a soft game? Players who can hit a third shot drop players who can dink, players who can reset the ball into the kitchen, players who can stop a far fight. Most of the time, they cannot. So let's see what kind of 4.0 game these players play. And please leave a comment in the comment section below as to what level you think these players are at. Let's go. So I really like the way they have these graphics on here. You can tell exactly who is who. In the near court, in the red, you have Brendan. In the near court in yellow, Victor. In the back court in black is Justin. And in the back court in green is Garrett. Here's the serve. It's a really nice backhand return. Ooh, and there's something that's a little concerning. I'm gonna first see if Justin continues to do it and I will point it out, but he hits the ball right into the net. Look at this shot. That was perfect. Right into the corner of the court with top spin. So right off the bat, I'm thinking that Brent, Brendan is probably a tennis player as well as a pickleball player. He put a lot of top spin on that ball and placed it perfectly where there really wasn't that much space to get the ball down the line. But great job by Brendan. Third shot drive coming up, and he missed that shot, and there's evidence here as to why he missed it. Let's go back and take a look. Boom, he's hitting the ball, and as you can see, he's just reaching down and getting the ball. His feet were not set for the most part. He was not bending his knees. A pickleball does not bounce that high, so you have got to go down and get it, and... Uh, Victor is a pretty tall guy. He did not do that. He just reached out to get it and he hits it right into the net. Again, you can see how his knees, or at least his right knee is not bent. It's almost straight up right into the net. I'm not sure why he would attempt a lob right there. That's a very uh, unwise move because Garrett is a pretty tall guy and nice job by Justin putting that right down the middle of the court. Now I want you to watch something that Justin did. I'm going to back it up and I'll get to where he does it. And he does it more than once so it's a habit that he has that I highly suggest you not do. Let's go and take a look. Here comes the serve. And if I can catch it right here. Okay. Look at his right foot. His right foot is off the ground when he is hitting his forehand. And that makes a player lose power. That's the second time I have seen him do that. It's not as obvious as it was previously, but he definitely is doing it. Out of all the players that I play with, all of the players that I have watched on YouTube, there's only 
Two players that I have seen that do this. He is the second one. The first is a very good player. Her name is Ruby. She's 15 or 16 years old. And you can watch her play on the Lucky Bounce Pickleball channel. And she has a bad habit of lifting up her left foot off the ground when she hits a forehand. Now we will watch as Justin is going to do it again when he is dinking. Here we go in just a second here. He did it right there. Look how his right or his left foot is off the ground that time. It was way, way, way off the ground. You have got to get your feet set, planted on the ground and not do this. It is a bad habit. If you're doing something like this, my advice is stop it. Okay, so I think you got the idea there. Now he doesn't do it every time, but he does it enough to where it's gonna create a problem for him. That ball was going out, I believe, but probably a good idea to hit it. Nice backhand return by Victor. Oh, a body shot right there. Third shot drive right into Victor's put away zone. That's just a shot that a 4.0 player cannot hit. Because there's what's going to happen. The serving team is just going to hit it at their opponent's feet like Victor just did. So a very poor third shot by Garrett. Let's see what Victor can do. Let's go back and take a look what happened here. Now, again, another third shot drive that just is not effective. Garrett did a good job of being at the non-volley zone and getting this ball with his backhand. And he had a little spin on it, I believe. And what happened? Brendan just could not get to the ball in time to get it over the net. Oh, that's a nice serve. Oh, that ball was going out. So, you know, if the ball is at your eyes, let it fly. Garrett hit it back anyway. He could have um, gotten the point if he would not have done that. And that's just a great backhand flick by Brendan. Very nice. Third shot attempt. Third shot drive. That one worked for Brendan. So nice job again. He's a banger. Here comes another bang. Boom. Missed it again. So what is happening there is Justin is just not able to handle these third shot drives. So, you know, like I said, can you win in pickleball at the 4.0 level by hitting drive after drive after drive and being a power player? Yes, you can. But if you're going to play a team who has an overall game who can both bang it and play a soft game, I'm in favor of the team that can do both winning over a team who was totally one dimensional. They're going to try it again. Oh, okay. So, like I mentioned earlier, mistakes do happen, but that is just a mortal mistake giving your opponents a free point simply because you did not return their serve. All right, here's Brennan with a third shot drive. Let's see if this is going to be effective enough to allow both him and Victor to move up. It does not. So look where they are. Look how far they are from the non-volley zone. They are stuck back here. Can he hit a fifth shot reset, allowing them to move forward? No, he cannot. That was right in Garrett's put-away zone. He does a good job of hitting it at Brendan's feet. He has to back up to get it, but is able to get it. That's just popped up. And right here, Garrett should put this ball away because, again, Neither Brendan nor Victor are able to move up because they just cannot reset the ball into the kitchen. That's a good get. You got to put it away sooner or later. Oh my goodness, that ball is out. I mean, you're defending from the baseline and you're lobbing the ball up. You can get a few of them back, but eventually you're probably going to lose. That ball was going out. He hit it anyway. Nice defense. And he misses that one right into the net. Oh, and that ball was on the line. He was a little fist pump there. Nice shot. Oh! 
Let's go back and take a look at that, because this is actually a couple of pretty good shots right here. Here's a return. Here's the third shot. He goes with the drive, and as you can see, Brennan is just sitting there waiting for it. And Garrett plucks it out of the air. That's a nice shot. That's what you call a shake and bake, baby. Okay, so very good job by Justin getting that third shot drop in and getting to the non-volley zone. This is the first time in this game that these players have all been at the non-volley zone line. Unfortunately, Justin hit that shot out of the court. Third shot drive coming here. It looks like Garrett and Justin are going to be waiting for it. Yep. Oh, there's kind of a chicken wing, but he got it. Oh, and hit the net, the post, and bounced back. Got to get your serves in, guys. No excuse for missing a serve, especially playing in an indoor environment where there is no wind to affect the serve at all. Players are hardly ever, ever going to score an ace when serving, so just make sure you get your serve into the court. That time, Victor did not. Third shot drop, even though he had his left foot way in the air. I still highly advise not to do that. Firefight! When you get into a firefight, especially with young guys like this, you've got to slow it down if you possibly can. They did not, and it ended rather quickly. Missed the backhand. He has his hands on his hips like, how in the world did I miss this? Let's see what he does. Oh, he just missed it. It was a pretty good effort. I don't believe he got low enough to get that backhand. And that attempt hits the net and goes back into the court. Oh, my goodness. Third shot drive. Good get. Nope. Point over. Yep. So we'll go back and take a look. What happens here is the serve is just not deep enough. It is allowing Brendan to move up. You know he's a banger. You know he's a power player. So because that was such a shallow return, he has all the opportunity in the world to hit this right at Justin. That's what he does. Justin has to defend with his backhand. All he can do is pop it up and boom. That's a good, good job by Justin. Noticing how high the ball was hit, he was able to backtrack, get set in that a split step position and actually get this ball back, but um, his partner, Garrett, did not move back. He stood his ground and boom, right into the net. Again, watch what he does. Here it comes. Here it comes. He's trying to get back, but he's just not fast enough to get a split step and to get in that ready position to defend that ball. He has to be just a little bit quicker than that. Oh, nice try there with the third shot. He almost got it with the backhand. Ended up hitting it too high, and Garrett put it away. There's a little chicken wing again. Not that time. Okay, so let's look at this. I'm going to stop it right here. Look where Victor is. Look where Jordan I'm sorry, Justin and Garrett are. They are all at the non-volley zone. I mean, Victor is almost there. He's a few steps away. But look where Brendan is. Brendan is way in the back of the court. So what should happen here is Justin and Garrett should keep him back. Good job there. Okay, so he lofted that ball up, or lobbed it up. Hit right there at Victor's feet. He did a really good job of defending that ball. Now, both Brendan and Victor should be in a defensive position, which they are. And Brendan cannot get it back. Again, if you're stuck at the back of the court, your chances of winning a point are just not very good. Oh, there it goes again. Justin with the left foot raised up. Oh, just out of the court. Nice try, but just missed the shot. Oh, good job. Good job right there by Victor getting that 
third shot drop in. But as well as that was hit, look where both Brendan and Victor are. They did not move up. For some reason, they stopped right here. Now they're up. And you got it. Oh, nope. Didn't work out for him. Oh, just too shallow of a return. Just too shallow. Okay. Goodbye. You've got to do better that that with the return. You've got to get it deeper. If you're just going to lollipop it up there, it's going to give your opponent a time to move into the court and hit a third shot drive right at you. And that's exactly what happened on that shot. Okay, free point for the team in the near court as Garrett missed a return for the second time. And look at his body language. His head is in the air. He's got his paddle in his hand saying, oh my goodness, did I just really do that? Another just not good enough on the return, especially against a power player like Brendan. And here's something Brendan's doing that I don't 100% agree with. Look at the break in his wrist. Whenever I am playing, I do not break my wrist to this extent. That is what a tennis player does. When I do this, I lose power. So when I hit a ball like this, my wrist is not bent as much as Brendan's is. Instead, I get all of my power with my lower body. And let's see what happens here. He, he did pretty well with it, though. I got to admit, he did pretty well with that. I would not recommend breaking your wrist as much as he does and instead using your lower body. But he did it for him, and it works for him, so that's okay. Here we go again. Let's see if he does it again. Yeah, he's got a whip to his uh, forehand here. And again, I think it's 100% because he's a tennis player. And here's a good defensive play by Garrett, getting that ball back. He was able to do a split step and get it into the court. Here comes Victor with the fifth shot power drive. Oh, he got it back. Let's see here. Okay, let me show you the mistake that Brendan is making. We'll go ahead and play this point out. He missed that one. And that's the end of the game. But let me show you the mistake that Brendan is making when he is defending these balls at the non-volley zone. I want you to watch his paddle. In this situation, Victor is hitting the ball so hard that Garrett should not swing at this ball. All he should do is put his paddle up and let the ball hit his paddle. Instead, he hits the paddle forward. Watch. Look at that. See how he's hitting the ball? There is no need to do that. He does it again. Boom. It's a punch shot. There is no reason for him to punch this ball because Victor is hitting it so hard. He's going to try to punch it again. Punch it. And he punches it right out of the court. Again, that's the game. The team in the near court win by the score of 11 to 5. I really had no idea that there was uh, this much discrepancy in the score. I thought it was much closer than this. And so now I am going to give you what level I think each of these players are at. I understand this is a small sample size. It's only one game. They did play two other games. I did watch the two other games, and they really did not play any differently than they played in this game. First, let me say these players are very athletic. They did a great job at being in that ready athletic position on almost every exchange. So great job doing that. They also did an excellent job of knowing when to move forward and knowing when to stay midcourt or maybe further back to do a split step to defend a ball that was going to be hit at their feet. The problem is they were having to defend so often because their third shots were just not effective enough to allow them to move forward. So they were getting caught midcourt or further back. And here's one big tell why that happened. Brendan hit eight third shot drives out of those eight only twice was he able to move forward and the only reason he was able to move forward is because the returns were so shallow on the other six shots that were returned deeper into the court brendan could not move forward i think brendan is a 4.0 tennis player so just because he's a 4.0 tennis player does that make him a 4.0 pickleball player 
No, it does not. I'm going to rate Brendan as a 3.5 pickleball player because he is strictly a banger. And until he starts attempting third shot drops and can get about 75 to 80% of them into the kitchen, he is going to remain a 3.5 pickleball player. Let me move on to Justin. Justin is a 3.5 player because he has the flaw of raising his left foot when hitting a forehand. He has got to stop doing that. Victor, you know, I think Victor did well. I think he's more like a 3.75 player. Now, Garrett, he actually hit more successful third shot drops than all of the other three players combined. He was at the nine volley zone with his paddle in front of him in a backhand position, which is a really good thing to do. So I'm going to say he is a 3.75 player as well. To sum it up, I don't think any of these players are true 4.0 players. Only twice in the game were all four players at the non-volley zone dinking back and forth. They just did not have a dinking game. I don't know if they're capable of doing it, but at least in the three games that I watched, they were not at the net all at once very often. And I already mentioned the issues with third shot drops and resets and mostly just wanting to hit the ball back and forth as hard as possible in order to get the point over as soon as possible. That's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really do appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned something from watching it. I enjoyed doing it. I want to thank them for reaching out to me to ask me to pick the video apart. So again, if you liked it, I hope you take the time to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching and see you on the court.